So we're on to 5.6 here, and this is the properties of linear relations. Okay, so before we even start, what does the word linear mean? Linear means straight. Okay, so pretty much what we're talking about is relations that create straight lined graphs. Okay, and remember, equations are represented by graphs. So after this, this is what we should be able to do. You should be able to identify a linear relation graphically. You should be able to identify linear relations given a table of values. You need to be able to understand and describe the um, following characteristics of a linear relation, and that's the slope. Okay, We should understand how slope and rate of change are related and understand that slope is a brand new concept. Okay, And then how to determine slope uh, represents in a specific relation. Okay, so given a context, what does it represent? So let's move forward. What does it mean to be linear? Well, linear means to be straight. Okay, so a relation is linear if the graph it creates forms a straight line. Okay, so here we can see that all these graphs here are perfectly straight lines. And what does that mean? That means they're a linear function. Here we have nonlinear functions. We can see that they squiggle, they bend, they turn, they wiggle. So these are not straight lines, therefore they are nonlinear. Okay. So honestly, visually it's pretty easy to notice. If something is a straight line, therefore it is a linear graph. Finding linear relations and table of values. This is a little different. But what you want to understand, it's where your independent and dependent values increase and or decrease at a constant rate. It doesn't have to be at the same rate, but they just have to be decreasing or increasing at a constant rate. So here we can see our domain or our x values. So remember, these are our independent values. And these are our dependent. We can see here they're going up by one consistently. So it's a constant rate in our independent, and over here, it's a constant rate of going up by two dependent. So yes, this is linear. No, this is not linear. And why? Because we can see that this isn't going, or this is going up by a constant rate, but our dependent values are not. We're going up by plus three, then plus one, plus two. So as soon as either or, K is not a consistent rate. It is not a linear relation. So let's look at some examples here. So example one, determine if a table of values represents a linear relation. So again, first, look at the variation in the independent variable. Look at the variation in the dependent variable. If the variation is constant, then the relation is linear. So let's look here, example one. So let's look at our Remember, these are our independent variables because they are on the left-hand side, and this is our domain above here. What is our domain going up by? Well, we're going from 0 to 1, which is plus 1, 1 to 2, which is plus 1, 2 to 3, which is plus 1, 3 to 4, which is plus 1, 4 to 5, which is plus 1. So from there, we can see that, hey, this is going up by a constant rate, but we have to make sure both are. So let's check over here. So to get from 0 to 9.8, we have to add 9.8. To get from 9.8 to 9.6, well, let's see here. I'm going to bring out my calculator. So how can I figure that out? Well, I'm going to take my first value here, 19.6, and subtract it from 9.8. So it looks like to get from here to here, I have to add 9.8. Let's check here, 29.4. What's the difference there? Subtract 19.6, and that's 9.8 again. Now, after you get the first three, you're not quite done, but it can be easy now. Here, it should be 9.8. So let's do 29.4 and add 9.8. And look at that, it brings us to the value we want, 39.2, 39.2. So we have to add 9.8 to get here. And I'm going to guess adding 9.8 to 39.2. Hopefully that brings us 
to 49. So let's check here. And it does. So add 9.8. So as you can see here, we are going up by a constant rate on both sides. So this thing is a linear relation. Okay, so if we were to graph this thing, understand that our graph would be perfectly straight. Okay, so this is a linear relation. Both are going up by constant rates. So the change, change in uh, domain and range are constant. Okay, so these are linear relations. Let's go to example two here. So it's the same idea. I guess this table shows us the relation between the number of bacteria and time in minutes. Again, time here, this should actually have a little minute here, and this should be representing bacteria. That's why we should always have proper uh, units listed. Now my time, my time is on the left-hand side, so this thing is my independent variables. Uh, ind independent variable. Over here, my bacteria depends on the time at which it has elapsed, so this is my dependent variables, making this side my range and this side my domain. So that's a good little review. Now let's see here, how do I get from 0 to 20? Well, that's pretty easy, I just add 20. How do I get from 20 to 40? Again, I just add 20. How do I get from 40 to 60? I add 20. And how do I get from 60 to 80? I add 20. So, so far my domain goes up at a constant rate. But remember, both of them have to. So let's check over here. So my bacteria, how do I get from 1 to 2? Well, I add 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. How do I get from 2 to 4? Well, 2 plus 2 is 4. I actually can stop here because notice that the change is not constant. So as soon as I see this, not constant rate of change. And there's my issue. This is not linear. And just so you guys are a visual type, if you were to plot these points, what's actually going to look like is this is going to look like this. Okay. You don't, know, you don't have to know how to get that, but just understand, if you were to graph it, it would be a bent-looking graph. It is not a straight graph. Okay. So now we've learned how to tell if something's a linear relation. We can go forward and we can even now plot things. So if we know how to graph each equation and determine if it's linear or not, we can explain our answer. So here, what we're going to be able to do is if we plot these points, we should be able to see if our graph is straight or not. So in creating a table of values, make your domain values increase at a constant rate. So that's kind of a hint, and that's a really important hint. Okay. So don't randomly choose random points, okay? When you plot your domain values, go up by a constant rate, okay? Try and make it linear at first, and then you can see what your independent values, how they correspond. So I'm just going to make my life easy and do 2, 4, uh, 6, 8, 10, okay? Now... Let's solve for what y is when x is 2. So we have an equation here. So y equals 3. And now I'm going to replace my x with 2. So 3 times 2. So that equals 6. So when x is 2, y is 6. And then we're going to just continue that. So 3 times when x is 4. So 3 times 4. And what is 3 times 4? Well, 3 times 4 is 8. Okay, now we got to replace x with 6, so we will get y equals 3 times 6, 
and that's 12. Oh, I totally messed up here. 3 times 4 is definitely not 8. 3 times 4 is 12. I'm thinking 2 is here. My fault, everyone. And then here, 3 times 6 is definitely not 12. That's 18. Whoops. So that should be 18. There we go. Okay. So make sure you're doing multiplication properly, of course. So, and then now we're going to replace x with 8. So y equals 3 times 8. And what is 3 times 8? Well, 3 times 8 is 24. And finally, y equals 3x. Well, I'm going to replace x with 10. So y equals 3 times 10 which is 30. Now, something to note here is we could have actually stopped after a bit because something to see is we are going up by 6. So as soon as you plot your first two val or first about three values, if they're going up by a constant rate, we could have just followed that. So we could have just done 18 plus 6 is 24, 24 plus 6 is 30. Okay, now let's plot these points. So remember, on a graph, our independent values are our domain, and in this case, it's x. Here our range is y, and these are our dependent values, which is our range. These are coordinate points when x is 2, y is 6. So the way I'm going to do this is I probably am going to go up by 2s. Uh, so let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10. Okay, so that worked. And here we have to get all the way up to 30. Okay, so let's figure out what we need to go up by. So I probably am going to go up by 5s every second point. So 5, 10, 15. Well, that's not even going to work. So again, sometimes it's some trial and error. So let's go up by... 10. So 10, 20, 30. Okay, so there might be a bit of estimating, but that's okay. Um, so let's plot these points. So when x is 2, so right here, y is 6. So 6 would be roughly about here. So I'm going to plot 6 roughly there. So that's my point. 2 and 6, 2 and 6, and they meet up right there. Now when x is 4, y is 12. So when x is 4, y is 12, so roughly right there. So when x is 4, y is 12. Okay, our next coordinate point, when x is 6, y is 18. So when x is 6, y is roughly 18, so we're pretty much below 20 there. Okay, and then when 8, when x is 8, y is 24. So y, uh, that should be a little bit over, so this should be 8 here. So when x is 8, y is 24, so that's going to fall roughly right here. Now, I could plot this last point, but recognize this is a linear trend. So why not just connect these points and continue the graph on forever? Okay, so something like that. And I could even do this and make this go down on forever. Okay. And recognize our point 10 and 30 has been plotted. 10 and 30, look at that. So it does fall on our graph. So this is a linear relation. So this is a linear relation. We kind of figured that out because we can see that these go up by the same rate. But over here, we can also see that this is a straight line. So two different ways to figure out if something's a linear relation. Okay, let's go forward and look at B now. 
So B, again, let's plot our domains easy. Let's make our life a little easy. So I'm going to make this, uh, let's go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So go up by uh, 1. So this is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, and plus 1. Okay, so I followed my advice and made my domain values increase at a constant rate. Now we got to figure out what our y values when our x values are chosen. So let's plug in negative 2 in for x. So this will become y equals negative 2 squared minus 3. Negative 2 squared, remember, that actually gives me positive 4 minus 3. And 4 minus 3 gives me 1. So when x is t negative 2, y is negative 1. Let's go on to when x is negative 1 here. So let's plug in negative 1 and for x. Okay, and that will give me negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, minus 3, which is negative 2. Let's figure out when x is 0. So plug in 0 for x. So 0 squared minus 3, and that's 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. Okay, uh, let's move forward here. Let's just make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. So 1 to negative 2 to negative 3. Yeah, and now let's go on to when x is... 1, so plug in 1 here, so y equals 1 squared minus 3, so that becomes 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So this is negative 2. So let's see if, at this moment, if we see any trend here. So to get from 1 to negative 2, how do we get there? Well, we subtract 3. Okay, how do we get from negative 2 to negative 3? Well, that's just minus 1. How do we get from negative 3 to negative 2? Well, we add 1. So here we can see we have different numbers coming up. So this we already know should not be linear. Because our range is not increasing at a constant rate. Okay, Our domain is, but as soon as one of them is not increasing by a constant rate, it is not linear anymore. So let's finish finding these points. So let's figure out where y, x is 2, what is y, so plug in 2 for x, so 2 squared minus 3, that gives me 4 minus 3, which is 1. And finally, when 3 is x, so 3 squared minus 3, that's 9 minus 3, which is 6. Okay, now let's just plot this to see what it looks like. So here we're going up negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to be pretty nice and plot these fairly spaced out. So this will be negative 1. So here I've went 1, 2, 3 over. So I'm going to have to go 1, 2, 3 over. This will be negative 2. And that would make 1, 2, 3, this negative 3. I have to follow the same spacing on the other side. So here this will be 1. This will be 2, and this will be 3. Okay? My y values, I get to the lowest number of negative 3 and the largest number of 6. So I think if I just go up simply by 1s, this should work out fine. Uh, let's go every 2, though. So 1, that actually might not work. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, and down here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and let's see if that works out there. So now let's plot these points. So when x is negative 2, y is 1. So when x is negative 2, y is 1. So that's this plotted point here. When x is negative 1, y is negative 2. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 2. So that's a point right here. 
when x is 0, y is negative 3. So when x is 0, y is negative 3. And that would be your y-intercept. When x is 1, y is negative 2. So when x is 1, y is negative 2. So that's plotted right there. When x is 2, y is 1. So when x is 2, y is 1. So we're right there. And finally, when x is 3, y is 6. When x is 3, y is 6. So we are found up there. Now, let's connect these points and see what this graph looks like. So our graph would end up looking roughly like this. And this point would actually be over here. So just so you're aware, our graph's going to continue on forever. And as we can see here, this is not linear at all. There's a bend to it. Okay, so we can not only tell from our table of values, we could also tell from our graph. Let's do one more here, okay, and see if this is a linear. Now here, I literally just have y equals 5. Lots of people get confused on what the heck that means. Okay, well, if we created our own table of values here, so our x values are our domain, our y values are range, create a few here. This is saying that y is just always 5. So here, let's plot and make sure our x values go up by a constant increment. So let's start 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. There you go. Now, when x is 0, what is y? Well, y is 5. That's what it says. When x is 1, what is 5? Well, y is 5. When x is 2, what is y? Well, y is 5. And hopefully you can see here that we're just constantly increasing. Now, let's graph this thing. So here we have 0, 1, 2, 3 for our x. So I'm just going to plot it over here. 1, 2, 3, okay, and then we just need a y value of 5, so this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? Now at this point, what's happening? Well, what's happening is we have these points, so 0 and 5, so when x is 0, y is 5, so we're going to plot that point. When x is 1, y is 5. When x is 1, y is 5. And hopefully you can see that we're simply just going to increase like this. We're not going to increase, we just have a line. So if we connect these points, we can find that we have a linear relation. This is indeed a straight line. Therefore, it is a linear relation. And you can tell also by the table of values. Look at this. So how do I get from 0 to 1? Well, since I plotted these, I made sure they went up by 1s. Remember, that's kind of the hint. Always make your domains if you have the option to go up at the same rate. Now let's look at 5. How do I get from 5 to 5? Well, I add 0. How do I get from 5 to 5? I add 0. How do I get from 5 to 5? I add 0. So you can also tell that both your range and your domain go up by constant rates. Therefore, you know it's a linear relation. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, I would suggest opening up your textbook, finding a few examples, and working through them yourself. Okay, uh, the next little portion is just uh, of 5.6. It's just about rate of change and putting a definition to what that rate of change is, okay? But that'll be another video on its own. So go practice some problems, come ask questions if you're a little confused, and uh, have a good day.